Uh, welcome everyone to the November 6th Youth Council Ward Reports. Uh, we're going to start today with Ward 8. My name is Megan Neves. I'm a student at Deer Creek High School and a representative of Ward 8. This month's Ward Report focuses on all the new and exciting changes happening within Ward 8. There's a new tennis center in the works near the northeastern corner of 15th and Kelly. The center will have six indoor and 24 outdoor courts and is expected to be completed in spring of 2020. Also, ITS, or Intelligent Transportation System Phase 2, has begun. 22 intersections on Broadway, 9th Street to Comfort Drive, on Danforth Boulevard to Sherry Lane, on Santa Fe, Covell to Danforth, and on Covell Broadway to Maryland Williams Drive are under construction. Expected completion time is spring 2020. Finally, the City Council had an emergency meeting yesterday to vote on whether or not a billboard should be placed in front of the Hearts for Hearing Children's Playground. The City Council unanimously voted to hold construction of said billboard for six months. Councilman Stonecipher voted in favor for the timeout to protect the children's health and allow time to reach out to the property owners around the area. The issue will be brought up once again tomorrow. This concludes my ward report. Hello, my name is Gladys Green and I'll be giving the Commission's report today for Ward 8. Me and my partner have the pleasure of interacting with the wonderful people at the Water Trust. The Utilities Department has partnered with the Oklahoma Quality Foundation to make better changes for the future to improve service. The Water Trust has also received very high satisfaction rating um, for the many things that they do. The, uh, the rating is above average and is one of the highest in the country. Because they continue to change to better serve our community, they have reached many accomplishments. Solid waste has increased the frequency of recycling pickups in rural areas, and the fleet service is also making improvements. They have installed the city's first ever big lifting device to take strain off of the employees. Employees are dedicated to their jobs. Four line maintenance employees have, are going to be recognized for putting out a fire in the old spaghetti warehouse building. We appreciate them for their service. This concludes my report. Ward 7. Good morning, OKC. My name is Teresa Sorrells. I attend Mount St. Mary High School, and I'll be giving the November Zoo Commission report. For the whole month of November, the zoo is having Military Appreciation Month. Veterans, active duty, retired, <coughs> National Guard, and reserves all get free admission to the zoo. You must have your military ID with you, and four immediate family members can also get half off admission if they come with you. Um, also 40% off of concessions and merch in the zoo's safari gift shop and 10% off all wild encounter experiences. So that's from November 1st to 30th. Um, speaking of veterans, on Monday, November 11th, the zoo is open from, for Veterans Day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Saturday, November 11th, the zoo is having a blood drive. <clears throat> if you donate, you get two vouchers for free admission to the zoo. It's free to participate, and you don't need an appointment. That is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, go to www.redcrossblood.org for more details on blood donation requirements. The zoo is closed on Thanksgiving Day. Also, keep in mind that the zoo starts their seasonal hours um, this month. There were some birthdays la last month at the zoo. Bamboo, the Asian elephant herd's honorary grandma, turned 53. And Shanti, the rhino, turned 33. Visit okczoo.org or follow their social media sites to stay updated and get details on events. This concludes my November Zoo Commission report. Hi, my name is Fiza Sheikh. I am a student from Edmond Santa Fe High School, and I'll be delivering the Ward 7 Ward Report. Um, first of all, thanks to everyone who came up to the sixth ever Burger Treat Oklahoma City, um, as well as to the event sponsors. Our beloved downtown in December is coming back for its 17th year in 2019. Some of the exciting holiday events happening in Bricktown this year include the Oklahoma City Tree Lighting, which is on November 29th, from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, the Holly Jolly Shops, which is December 7th and 8th, and then Snow Tubing, which starts the 29th of this month, and then there's free holiday water taxi rides from November 29th until December 29th. 
Um, for more information, visit downtowndecember.com. Um, moreover, the Oklahoma AIDS Care Fund will host its annual luncheon Friday, November 15th at the UCO CHK Central Boathouse at 11.30 a.m. This event commemorates World AIDS Day and provides awareness about how Oklahomans are impacted by HIV and AIDS. Tickets are sold for $40 and may be purchased online at okcaidscarefund.com. Also, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum and the Rodeo Historical Society is hosting the annual Rodeo Hall of Fame weekend, celebrating rodeo legends. Uh, we, the weekend events include rope and ride cocktail reception, inductee panel discussion, champion's dinner, and the benefit auction. Reservations for most events are required, so go visit nationalcowboymuseum.org, um, which will, this event will be held from November 8th to November 9th. Um, last but not least, the American Pigeon Museum and Library expanded their Kids' Corner with more coloring books, toys, scavenger hunts, books, and games. Um, thank you. This, this ends my uh, board report. Board 6. Hello, KC. My name is Jesus Berrigan, and I attend Southeast High School, and I'm your co-representative for Ward 6. This morning, I'm presenting a commission report over the Plaza District and the Downtown Review Committee. First off, we have Live on the Plaza, the Plaza District free monthly art walk featuring art shows, live entertainment, great food, and local shopping. Join us as we celebrate one of Oklahoma City's best monthly festivals that will be held on November 8th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Then we have the DDRC staff review proposal for the new construction addition and exterior modification to existing buildings and off-site modifications within the downtown design area. One high-profile case will be considered in the demolition of the old police headquarters. The old headquarters has been vacant since the new headquarters was built a few years ago. The site will become a parking lot in support of the new municipal court. There have been many discussions at the Oklahoma City Council about if the old city jail should be restored or demolished. Some people believe that the old jail is an important historical resource and others believe that the old build building cannot be successfully remodeled to anything else. Before final discussion is made on the old jail, it will have to go back to the council. Thank you and this concludes my commission report. Have a good day Oklahoma. Uh, good morning, OKC. My name is Fidel Fryer, and I attend class in SAS, and I am your Ward 6 co-representative. And today I will be conducting your Ward 6 report. Some news from the Scissor Tail Park. The Oklahoma City Astronomy Club will partner with Scissor Tail Park to host a public viewing of a rare transit of planet Mercury across the face of the sun on morning of Veterans Day, November 11th, Monday, 7 a.m. through 12 p.m. Tree for All, hosted by Myriad uh, Botanical Gardens on November 9th, Saturday, 9 a.m. through 10 a.m. This event is designed to assist homeowners as they promote natural beautification and improvement of the environment through the planting of trees. Trees will be available on a first come, first serve basis. The first 100 patrons of the morning will receive an Eastern Redbud seedling provided by the Oklahoma City Forest, Forestry Services. Barefoot and one gallon saplings along with three Gallon saplings range from $2 to $24 each. A full, full moon bike ride and run is taking place on November 11th, Monday, 7 p.m. through 8.30 p.m. at the Myriad Botanical Gardens. Bring your bike and meet up at the Band Shell Stage on the Devon Lawn for a leisurely hours ride through downtown. The full moon bike and run is a casual monthly event where friends and families can enjoy a leisure one hour ride, a bike ride, or a 5K run through the downtown area as the sun sets. Helmets and bike lights are required. Waivers are required to be signed also. Link can be found on the Myriad Garden Facebook page. And this concludes my Ward 6 report. Moving on to Ward 5. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Brinkley Abbott. I attend Southmore High School, and I am a co-representative of Ward 5. And today, <coughs> I will be giving you the Ward 5 report. Starting off, the Southwest Oklahoma City Public Library has started their new kickboxing series for the month of November. Every Friday through November 1st through the 22nd at 6.30 p.m., attendees will be taught Muay Thai kickboxing skills from an expert trainer. 
Participants 12 and older are encouraged to bring gloves and pads and must sign a waiver before taking part in the program. Also, the Southwest Oklahoma City Public Library is hosting an intro to improv at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, November 12th. Adults 18 and older will learn about the art of improv from members of the OU Improv, which is a University of Oklahoma state group, student group, um, dedicated to performing and teaching improvisational comedy. There are also many kid events taking place throughout the month, such as story times and arts and crafts. So for more information, visit the South Oklahoma City Pioneer Library website. In other news, OCCC will be hosting a Red Cross blood drive today on November 6th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if you're willing to give blood to help save some lives, uh, bring your best arm and drink plenty of fluids. Lastly, mark your calendars for the Arts and Crafts Fair being hosted at the Early Wine YMCA on Saturday, November 23rd. This event is open to the community from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. where you can visit more than 50 booths filled with incredible arts and crafts. So bring your loved ones to help you carry all your purchases because you won't go home empty-handed. For more information, visit the Early Wine webpage. Thank you, Oklahoma City, and this concludes my ward report. Unfortunately, my co-representative could not make it this morning, so I'll be giving her commission's report for Ward 5. Um, so starting off with the Parks Commission, a citizen has requested to name the Future Recreation Center at Douglas Park, located in 901 North Frederick Douglas Avenue, the Willa D. Johnson Recreation Center at Douglas Park, in honor of Oklahoma City Civic Leader Willa D. Johnson. This request was approved. Regarding the Parks Commission through MAPS 4, Money will go towards youth centers, improvements on sidewalks, trails, on-street bicycle lanes, and street lights. There will be improvements on most neighborhood parks depending on the improvements needed. The date to vote will be December 10th, 2019. The Game and Fish Commission. The PG-13 Fishing Dock is working with vendors for a new logo and the ADA compliance sidewalk has been built, waiting for the dock to be installed. Fisheries Management program activities, <laughs> report on 12,000 hybrid fish being maintained at the fish hatchery. Hatchery pond, the hatchery pond was restocked with 10,000 2.5 inch channel catfish. On another note, congratulations to Glena Osbend on her new position as a fisheries technician. Regarding the Golf Commission, Lincoln Park Golf Course will host the 2022 NAIA Women's National Championship, which will take place May 23rd through the 27th on 2022. The $19,000 course tournament fee includes course fees for practice rounds and tournament rounds, golf carts for coaches and tournament officials, practice range balls for participants, use of the club room, clubhouse room for tournament operations. Lincoln Golf Course Park was down for paid rounds, but up in revenue by $31,000. It hosted two large tournaments, Devon and Chaparral. Recently, our non-golf revenue Lion Clubhouse's banquet room was occupied 17 out of 30 days, most of which were golf tournaments. There has been a recommendation to increase fees at James E. Stewart Golf Course. The increase will be effective on December 1st, 2019. Regular round from $10 to $11. Senior round from $7 to $7.75. A cart would increase from $5.50 to $6.50. The park seems to be in good shape with the paid rounds up by 37% and having hosted four events for the month of September. To conclude, congratulations are in order as Mr. Jeffrey Mosher has been offered a new position with the city. Thank you for your service as a golf trust specialist. And this concludes the Ward 5 Commission Report. Thank you. We will now continue with the at-large council. Hi, my name is Nick Sayeg, a senior at Western Heights High School and I'm your co-representative for Oklahoma City at Large. Today, I'll be giving the city report. Since we last met, emergency officials have announced and implemented the new text to 911 system, which can be utilized by those living in Oklahoma, Canadian, Cleveland, and Logan counties. This will allow you to send messages directly to emergency responders from your mobile device without having to dial 911. Also, it will benefit those who find themselves in the unfortunate circumstance or emergency situations in which they cannot speak. However, I should advise you that officials do say that this system is relatively new and that the most efficient way to reach emergency responders is through calling them 
and voice calls. Next, I have some exciting news for those who like ice skating like I do. The Devon Ice Rink will be opening on November 8th and will stay open until February 2nd when it closes at, this, at the end of the winter season. So bring your friends and family down there and perhaps I'll see each other this weekend. Last, Oklahoma City has the exciting opportunity to host the 92nd Annual Oklahoma Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony, which will take place on November 21st. And if you're interested in attending, tickets are still available. This ceremony honors eight of Oklahoma's best with the highest honor someone can receive from our state, which is induction into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Sadly, I won't be nominated anytime soon, but if you know anyone that can be nominated and has served our state well, you can nominate them at oklahomahof.com on their website. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Katherine Hill, and I am your co-at-large representative. Today I'll be reporting for the Economic Development Trust of Oklahoma City. At their meeting on October 22nd, the Economic Development Trust approved an agreement with the Community Enhancement Corporation to buy and renovate 92 apartments located at 4020 North Meridian with an affordability requirement of 20 years and not to exceed $600,000. They also approved the final acceptance of Phase 2 of a project for Bricktown infrastructure improvements, bounded by Oklahoma Avenue from East Reno Avenue to East Main Street and from East Main Street to BNSF Railroad to Mickey Mantle Drive, accepting the project's placing maintenance bond into effect. Ryan Eshelman, the principal with GSB Incorporated, also gave a presentation at the meeting on the status of the construction of the MAPS 3 Convention Center Hotel. His update included that they are scheduled to complete construction on December 31st, 2020. Thank you, and this concludes my outlarge city report. We'll continue with Ward 4. Good morning. My name is Lane Youngwood. I, am a, I go to Carl Albert High School, and I'm a co-representative from Ward 4, and this is your Planning Commission report. There is a meeting on October 24th to discuss items and public hearings, and item 2 of the public hearing consent docket was approved to move the final plat of Saratoga Phase 2 to become part of the Northwest Quarter of Section 26. Commissioner Kofi moved to approve items 1 and 3 determining that this item is in conformance with the Comprehensive Plan, Plan OKC. Item, went, item 1 which included an application by Miller Tippins Construction Company to rezone 112 Northeast 52nd Street from the R1 Single Family Residential District to the I2 Moderate Industrial District. And item three, an application by Mitch Gregory on behalf of Grace Con Contracting Properties to vacate a por portion of the final plat of North Lincoln Industrial Park Phase 2. Being a part of the northeast quarter of Section 10, Township 13 North, Range 3, west of Indian Meridian, located south of Northeast 150th Street and west of North Lincoln Boulevard. Thank you, and this will, record this will conclude the Planning Commission report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Mackenzie Reeves from Moore High School, and I am your co-representative from Ward 4. Today, I will be bringing you your Ward 4 report. Ward 4 celebrated the official opening of the MAPS 3 trail at Lake Stanley Draper on October 26. This new trail is a 13.5-mile walking and bike trail, offering wonderful views of the lake and three new public art pieces. The Southern Oaks Library hosted the SAIL class, which stands for Stay Active and Independent. This event is a fitness event for older adults, which can be done from a chair or standing. The class started on October 1st and met twice a week for six weeks. The City Council approved a change order in the amount of $8,292.86 to add additional sidewalk to Capitol Hill High School and Spiegel Stadium. The work should be completed by November 8th of 2019. On November 3rd of 2019, there was the groundbreaking for the Blessed Stanley Rosher Shrine in South Oklahoma City. The $39.5 million shrine will be located at South 89th between Shields Boulevard and I-35. If you have any questions that were not addressed, you can visit OKC.gov for more information. This concludes my Ward 4 report. Ward 3. Hello, my name is Jorge Peña. I am a senior at Western Heights High School, and today I will pre be presenting the 
Word 3 Word Report. The registration deadline for the Youth Futsal League is November 16th. Futsal is a, touch on, is a Brazilian touch on indoor soccer. It's a fast-paced, highly skilled game of soccer played on a hard surface. Futsal is aimed at improving your foot skills, passing skills, and spatial awareness. Teams will consist of a maximum of 12 players. The games will consist of two halves of 24 minutes. Each team will play seven games followed by a single elimination playoff tournament, and the tournament champs will receive 12 championship medals. In addition, the Oklahoma City Parks and Recreation offers divisions of basketball leagues for boys and girls ages 5 to 12. Youth basketball is an exciting sport combining team play and individual skill. Give your child the opportunity to develop balance, hand-eye coordination, uh, teamwork, social skills, and confidence with this eight-game youth basketball league. Practices are one, one day a week depending on the coach and team availability. The recreation programs are dependent upon volunteer coaches. Volunteer coaches are allowed to bring any amount of kids to their team. The remaining roster will be filled by the league director based on a blind draw and the school the children attend. If you would like to help the program by becoming a coach or would like more information about these leagues, you can visit parks.okc.gov. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Desiree Rickett. I am a senior at Mustang High School, and today I will be presenting the Airport Trust Commission report. Just a reminder that the Airport Trust meets the fourth Thursday of every month at 9 a.m. in the City Council Chambers at City Hall. Meetings are scheduled to be shown live on City Channel 20 if you are interested. If you saw the meeting, you would know that the Will Rogers World Airport has approved construction of a cell phone waiting lot, reconstruction of Station 2, replacement of moving walks number 18 and 25, and in addition, bids for window cleaning services will open November 20th, 2019 for the World Roger, World, Will Rogers World Airport. Uh, furthermore, on January 8th, 2020, proposals for the airport food service and retail concessions will be opened. The Airport Trust has also approved repairs to 5300 South Portland Avenue. The Starman Brothers Auctions, Inc. has approved to lease Hangar 4 for the purpose of holding periodic aviation auctions and storage of aircrafts until August 31st, 20, 2024. If you'd like to hear about these items and other items discussed by the Airport Trust, remember to tune in to Channel 20 or watch a recording of the meeting. Thank you, and this concludes my Ward 3 Commission Report. Moving on to Ward 2. Good morning, Oklahoma City. I am Maya Shadid from Class and School of Advanced Studies, and today I will be providing you with your Ward 2 Commission Report. First up, the Paseo Arts District is, had its first Friday gallery walk on November 1st. The walk had vendors from Yum Pig, That Pie Truck, Big Friendly Craft Beer Bus, and Country Girl Kitchen, as well as the featured musician, Darren. If you have not already been, the first Friday Arts Walk is the first Friday of every month. It is completely free and open to the public. It features more than 80 artists and more than 25 businesses and is interactive for all ages. Secondly, in urban design, there has been an individual consideration to place new light fixtures along the Bricktown Canal and has been recommended by staff on the basis that the project meets the regulations and guidelines of the Bricktown Core Development Zoning Ordinance. Lastly, make sure to check out the next Paseo Plunge Listening Room on November 21st at 7 p.m. It will feature a different musical guest and band every third Thursday of the month. That is it for this month's Ward 2 Commission Report. Thank you and have a great month, Oklahoma City. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Francisco Hernandez and I am a student from Putnam City High School. Today I will be giving you the Ward Report from Ward 2. The Arts Award Night is an annual event to celebrate the recognized artists and art supporters who have made a strong contribution to arts in our state. This event will be held on Thursday, November the 14th at 6 from, uh, at the Harking Hotel. Tickets are $75 and can be purchased at the Paseo.org page. Freedom of Oklahoma recognized Oklahoma City James Cooper, Counselor and Representative Chelsea Graham at the 29th. 2019 Lawmakers of This Year Award Recipes. This year has been a groundbreaking year for visibility in our community with open representation spanning in a range of elected positions. The, the Britain District Day on Saturday, November the 16th, 2019 from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
Um, come and enjoy free, fun, and family-friendly live and local music and entertainment. Holiday Market It's in an historic great theater. We'll have local vendors, and we will have books to sell, um, free community classes and food trucks and beer tent at the Return Road, Oklahoma City. One local vendor in the Asian district was featured in yet another TV show, This Time Travel, at the Harry Bikers in the UK paid a visit. The, the show is currently airing the UK BBC network and it will probably stream on Netflix in the future. This concludes my report. Thanks. And last but not least, Ward 1. Good morning. My name is Cameron Pennington and I attend Putnam City West High School. I will be giving the report on the Conventions and Visitors Bureau. The Oklahoma City Thunder kicked off their season this month. Um, Thunder Games are on the list of events that visitors should not miss when they come to Oklahoma City, and uh, this new look team is definitely not one to miss. Um, as a horse show capital of the world, Oklahoma City will be hosting the 2019 American Quarter Horse Association World Championships. This event will uh, take place from November 8th to November 23rd at State Fair Park and it's free to the public. Downtown in December kicks off this month. Um, it will begin November 8th with the Devon Ice Rink opening at the Myriad Gardens. Uh, some other events this month are Lights on Broadway, which is November 23rd from 4 to 8. Um, businesses on Broadway and Automobile Alley will light up with um, LED lights, and there will be carriage rides, free s'mores, live music, and outdoor movies. And I heard that Santa will be there, so pretty cool. Um, the last event for downtown in December this month is Small Business Saturday. This is the uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving and is your opportunity to shop small businesses and uh, give back to your community while give, uh, shopping for Christmas gifts. For the full list of downtown in December events, visit downtownindecember.com. Uh, with that, uh, have a great November and this concludes my report. Good morning, Oklahoma City. My name is Samuel Messiani. I'm a senior from Putnam City High School, and I'm your co-representative for Ward 1. Today, I'll be giving the Ward 1 report. There has been confirmation that bike lanes and sidewalks are going in along Northwest 36th Street between City Line with Yukon and Overholzer. Although there's no set date of construction, it will be sometime in 2020. Many of the multi-use trails, including Hefner and Overholzer, are getting new signage, and the problem areas are being resurfaced. Right-of-way util utility maintenance and repair on 7830 Lyrewood Lane is set to be finished on November 12th. Um, although there's no lane closure, be, uh, be wary of steering clear of the truck that is stationed there. On October 29th, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Northwest Event Center, there was a community meeting regarding the pedestrian bridge that will cross the Northwest Expressway at the Wilshire intersection. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you, and this concludes my ward report. This concludes all of our ward reports for November 2019 Youth Council. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again. The Youth Council is a partnership between the city and Leadership Oklahoma City. The 18 Youth Council members learn about the challenges of local government firsthand, and the program provides them with an effective, meaningful channel to influence decisions affecting their homes, schools, friends, and community. While serving, the members learn about local government, its components, processes, goals, and successes.